2015 is coming to a close, so we feel like if we're ever going to do a part two on Back to the Future, it's now or never. Or 30 years ago. Or 60 years ago. Look, the point is, you guys wanted this, so here we go. Here are seven more things you didn't know about Back to the Future. Probably. We all know Doc gets into a bit of trouble on the clock tower in the first film, and it'll come as no surprise that he has a stunt double for some of the tougher shots. What you probably didn't know is his stunt double was a guy named Bob Yerkes, and that guy also invented the airbag. No, not that airbag, though that would truly be the most random and cool thing ever on this show. Yerkes invented the airbag for stunt use in filmmaking. So I guess back in the old-timey movies, old-timey stunt guys would have to fall onto, like, a pile of snakes or something. I don't know. But I do know that Yerkes definitely did the stunt industry a solid. We told you guys back in part one that Back to the Futures 2 and 3 were basically shot as one big movie. And since they did, in fact, end up splitting that one giant movie into two sequels, Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd each got raises for Back to the Future 3. It's standard practice, after all. Yes! Well, evidently, it isn't standard practice if you're the Bobs, Zemeckis, and Gale, who created, wrote, and in Zemeckis' case, directed the movies. Universal refused to give the Bobs a raise on Back to the Future 3. Studio execs more or less bullied them into taking the same deal they had on Back Back to the Future 2. That sucks and all, but I'm not gonna feel too bad for a couple of guys who are still millionaires anyway. Next thing. Giving the Bobs the shaft on a raise wasn't the only way production saved money on the Back to the Future sequels. This aerial footage under the credits in Back to the Future 2 is totally recycled. Industrial Light and Magic actually created it for Firefox, a Clint Eastwood flick from 1982. Can you fly that plane? Yeah, I can fly it. Don't worry, I'd never heard of it before either. As long as we're talking about recycling things from other movies, let's get into this scene. It would cost a lot of money to build all of these future cars themselves just for this sequence. So production grabbed any futuristic cars they could find on the backlots around town. There's one from Blade Runner in there, along with others from less successful future movies. I bet even from Firefox. I may very well be wrong, but you haven't seen Firefox either, so you can't prove it. Don't say anything. Just light the damn plane. All right. The self-lacing shoes in Back to the Future 2 are definitely one of the inventions in the movie that still have a lot of people wondering, why don't we have those? Well, the main reason is Back to the Future didn't have those either. The shoes were on a piece of fake asphalt and they laced themselves thanks to a couple of special effects guys yanking on some wires. Same goes for Marty McFly's self-tailoring jacket. It's still kind of hard to believe that technology hasn't caught up with ideas as simple as these ones though. Probably too busy wasting time on shit like those dumbass Apple watches, I guess. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Back to the Future is, for sure, a big part of movie history, so you might be surprised to learn that it would never have happened if it weren't for a movie that you've probably never seen, and maybe never even heard of. Firefox. Great mother of God, he's up! <laughs> I'm kidding, but wouldn't it be cool if I wasn't? The real answer is Romancing the Stone. See, in 1980, Robert Zemeckis had directed a movie that he co-wrote with Bob Gale called Used Cars. And this thing totally tanked. <laughs> like, it tanked so bad that he had to go to director jail for a couple of years since none of the studios wanted to make a movie with it. The Bobs wrote the first Back to the Future script during that three or four years, and all of the studios kept rejecting it because of, you know, the stench of failure. Zemeckis realized he needed to direct something that he didn't write in the hopes that it would do well enough to restore his street cred. And that something was Romancing the Stone. The minimum price for taking a stranded woman to a telephone was $400. 375 in traveler's checks? Not a deal. The movie did super well, and next thing you know, all of the studios were S and his D for Back to the Future, the same project they'd rejected a couple of years before. Classic Hollywood. We all know that Ronald Reagan gets name dropped in Back to the Future 1. Who's president of the United States in 1985? Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan? The actor? It's a funny moment, and Reagan himself thought it was hilarious when he saw the film. Rumor is he laughed so hard he even had the projectionist run it back so he could see it again. But I'm getting off topic with a boom bonus thing you didn't know. There you go again. Anyway, you probably never heard that Ronald Reagan almost played the mayor of Hill Valley for this scene in the third movie. Zemeckis offered him the role, and Reagan even considered taking it. After all, he was no longer president in 1989, which is when they were shooting. Obviously, he didn't take it in the end. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say he made the right call, politically speaking. 
And that brings our final episode of Things You Didn't Know for 2015 to a close. Now, if we're being completely honest, and I'd like to think that I am, we could maybe even do a part three sometime in 2016. So be sure to let us know if you guys are into that in the comments. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out Cinefix.com and subscribe for more truish things about movies, and sometimes men falling onto piles of snakes, right here on Things You Didn't Know.